let me go to Professor PJ now. Professor PJ, immediate actions. What exactly should be happening? I understand. Um, I don't know what connection you may have with the group of lawyers. I know that a group of lawyers have been assemble, assembled uh, by uh, Oliver Bak of Omawar, and they are in the, in the town. They are in Ashaiman, they, in the communities. They have been speaking with the victims. They have been taking down their details and trying to produce what they say is a report. A report that may not be only for the purposes of uh, taking action here to also seek compensation for the people, but that may go beyond the borders of Ghana. Um, I understand these lawyers are just volunteering. Uh, there's no financial incentive for it. They are going around speaking to the people uh, and getting their harrowing stories. Beyond that sort of process, the condemnation by Shraj. Shraj is very shocked at this. What should happen? Thank you. Yeah, I think what the we are trying to do on the ground is very important. That is to get the information that will be used as evidence. And one information I got is that almost every house was touched because information filtered around that the soldiers were in the community and people were advised not to step out. And so message moved from one place to the other. Those So those who were caught were those who couldn't get the news. And therefore, the soldiers had to um, enter into houses, uh, break down doors, and drag people out of their homes. And they blocked so the roads. Sorry. They blocked the roads. Yes, they, they, they blocked the roads and to uh, ensure that they, they round up people with the help of the helicopters providing some information to the soldiers on the ground. So this is a typical um, conflict zone uh, situation that was witnessed. And so information is being collected to be able to know the extent of damage done, not only to uh, people's dignity and to their uh, health and livelihood, but also to property itself. And so that is uh, some work is being done in that regard. And um, there's also attempt to get the Ghana Psychological Association to provide counseling for the victims. And we, we are making some progress in that direction as well. As to what to do with the information, I think, um, of course, we have to look at internally as well as externally. Internally, Shraj is one place to go. Of course, with Shraj, we have to actually make a complaint, a petition before we can take up the matter. So we appreciate the fact that this time they've come out to condemn the act, which is what a body like a, a National Human Rights Institution is supposed to do. And so Shraj is one place to go. Um, of course, the courts are also available. And we also want to go to Parliament and make sure that Parliament, the, the uh, Committee on Security and um, um, Interior, uh, Defence and Interior will also do more than what they have said they were going to do. We think that they should have already been there on the ground to gather the information and to talk to people. Um, but the information we are getting is that probably they want things to calm down a bit first. But they are not the perpetrators. They rather want to be on the side of the people. And so there shouldn't be any fear for them going to the ground now. Um, externally, um, one sure place to go to look up to is to make a case to uh, use the special procedures available under the uh, human rights, UN Human Rights System, the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights is a procedure system. And then the Kuwas Court of Justice is also there. With that, you don't need to exhaust local remedies. You can take your case to them at any time. Because we want to be sure that we know, as um, uh, Professor Eni said, who gave the order, who sat down and designed the rules of engagement. But why do you want and to embarrass the nation this further at official, you know, uh, courtesies uh, internationally? Why do you want to do this? It is not about embarrassing um, the nation. It is about putting things right because Ghana is a state party to a number of human rights treaties, including the one on convention against torture. And as a party, a state party, you are supposed to make periodic state reports 
And so in the next two years or three years, when Ghana's next report is due, it is supposed to comment on it's supposed to talk about this in the state report. So if um, so far looking at the information that we are getting and looking at the posture of government, we don't see a situation where the government um, has even rendered an apology. Any form of supposed apology is only um, unfortunate and face-saving and in fact, irresponsible and insensitive to the plight of the people who have been on the other end of the brutality. So mm. we think that um, that will also put a sense of um, okay. re uh, re responsibility in the government mm. to take things very seriously. How, how bad is it that the president has said nothing about this so far? And uh, the defense minister, deputy defense, we have heard counter, you know, uh, statements. One comes to say we will not apologize for this. Uh, the defense minister says these things should be expected. Some of these things should be expected. Um, what, what do you say? I think that um, it, is, uh, it casts a very bad image on Ghana's reputation as a democracy. And so uh, definitely in our next, uh, next state report, whether by U.S. State Department or which of Freedom House and so on, uh, uh, Ghana's rating is going to go down because of this uh, brutality which has been meted out to the citizens. And the back stops with the president. He's the commander-in-chief. And he himself has said it before, that in such situations, that is what should happen. And your, your, your slides talk about how there has been a pattern of brutality. And what is very um, in, in important to note is that in this case, in the war case, uh, to my extent, to some extent to the Jura case and so on, the, the soldiers may have gone on a frolic of their own, but this one was uh, an, a so-called intelligence-led operation orchestrated by the military high command. And whether it went haywire or not, which I don't believe mm. is that was the case, it, something has gone wrong and somebody should own up. Mm. And so far, nobody has owned up and the president should do so. So not saying anything at all is very, very unfortunate. Prof, and it's, Prof it's, I'll, I'll, a, make, a, I'll make this confession to you. In the course of the week since this happened, I've had numerous calls from respected statesmen and women. I've had calls from even outside of this country. And among the impression is that if the right thing is not done by the leadership, it is the Ghanaian citizen, civil society, and respected voices like yours and Professor Kwesienin to blame because you seem to treat this, and the media more particularly, you seem to treat this as another normal occurrence. That's why you have had as many as 10 recorded in less than three years under the watch of a human rights lawyer as president. That, that's right. That, that is why, for example, we are looking at um, going external as well, because we, we want to make sure that the image of Ghana is, is protected and held intact. And we also want to make sure that these brutalities are not normalized. They are not accepted as a rule. I've also received a number of messages that say that I'm on the wrong side of the fence and that the people need to be treated the way they have been treated. Again, this idea of a shaman being um, a den of thieves and criminals is portrayed that we need to put sense into them. The police are ineffective, incompetent, corrupt. Therefore, the army should do the job for them. And, I'm, and my response is, hello, aren't we living in a democratic dispensation? The soldiers, there's a, what we call accountability. And the soldiers are supposed to be accountable to a civilian authority. And the civilian authority is the commander-in-chief. And he should make sure that by this time there would have been some dismissals and uh, if people would not resign, they, there would have been some dismissals. He would have at least made a statement the thing, that... The thing that has been sanctioned by the high command, who is doing what dismissals? Of course, um, there, there is a commander-in-chief because if they would talk to him that... Maybe they said it was a t an intelligence-led operation, but it has proven that it wasn't an intelligence-led operation. It was a soup, and which led to many innocent people 
almost everybody who was arrested. And what did they find? Some slabs of cocaine and so on. That is not what they were going to look for. So the government, the president should own up and he should dissociate himself from the statement made by the minister of defense and the, mini the deputy minister to say that, no, this is not how um, this process should have gone. This is not how the operation should have been orchestrated. So you are suspended, you are dismissed. There are rules, there are tribunals under the Security and Intelligence Act, mm. the Armed Forces Act, the Police Service Act. There are rules there. The Constitution tells about the responsibilities of the police. And, 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 and that should also be one place to look at, the, the shaking of responsibility on the part of the police for not coming out and taking any action to ensure that these soldiers mm. are also um, dealt with according to the criminal laws of the country. It's something mm. that also need um, to be looked at. Um, Prof, just uh, 30 seconds before I let you go. There, there's been this thing uh, about, they said they are rounding up the people, they are taking them to one place, and then they were handing them over to the military police. And some have said, well, the military police, that is a rightful process to deal with. Um, can you tell us anything about that? Well, the military uh, police is supposed to uh, coordinate the activities. Professor F. Any made that point. Coordination is lacking. The military police can take up certain um, responsibilities that the uh, Ghana Police Service is supposed to do, but they coordinate. They are supposed to share intelligence and they're supposed to determine where the military police comes in and then uh, where the um, Ghana Police Service also uh, does their job. When a civilian, so, when a civilian uh, does something against uh, a uniformed person, the military police can arrest them and deal with and deal with them. There is to an extent to which they, they can do because even ordinary citizens like you and myself can cause arrest where there is reasonable suspicion or the person is caught in the act. And but it's, unfortunately, this is what we see with the swoop that took place. I, I ask China. that question because I'm aware of situations where civilians are arrested and put in cells in the military police. Yeah, so the, the function of the military police is mainly to deal with, uh, usually with incidents involving the military, where military personnel are involved. But in the end, they work together with the Ghana police. And secondly, when the Ghana police um, seems to be overwhelmed or need extra support, they also turn to the military police to help So, in. So that, do I have a, and I need a, one clear answer, straight answer to this. Are you telling Ghanaians that if you offend a military officer or you offend a relation, someone whose relative is a military man, they can, military police can come pick you up and take you to their cells and deal with you? No. But that, that is, is happening in this country. Point. That is happening in this no. country. Yeah, of course, of course, that is what is happening. And that is what we, we, we are condemning. And that, that is not how it works at all. Yes. Okay. The, the, that coordination should be there with Ghana police. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, gentlemen. Thank you for your time.